What's up, everyone? This is Eric Devendorf, your host of the Scores Table Podcast. Before we get to our episode with our next guest, Josh Pace, I want to let you guys know that this podcast is sponsored by Bet Rivers. Make sure you guys go to betrivers.com and place your bets today. Now let's get into our next episode with JP. All right, here we go. Born in Griffin, GA. Played 2001 to 2005. Mr. Everything played a key role in the 2000 National Championship team. Played a 10-year career overseas, New, New Zealand, Australia, Estonia, ABA, and the CBA. Went on to be an assistant coach at Pepperdine and now is the head coach at Western New Mexico women's basketball team. JP, my guy, I appreciate you coming on, man. Man, absolutely. And even before we start, bro, let me give you your flowers too. Just because people don't understand um, where you come from and then to hoop at the Cukes and then to have a professional career. And then, um, you know, I kind of in the same boat, went to the Cukes, did my thing, had a professional career. And to be doing what you're doing now, like making changes in the community and being a leader in the community and um, just changing lives the way you're doing it, bro. From After playing professional basketball and playing at a school like Syracuse, um, and making that adjustment to, to figure out what you want to do after that, bro, I, I, I want to I wanna salute you because people don't understand that grind playing professional basketball, but having to make that change and make that adjustment when that ball stopped bouncing. And for you to be doing what you're doing, because I know coaching, me coaching now, doing what I'm doing, and you doing what you're doing, bro, let me salute you and give you your flowers too. Well, I appreciate that, bro. No, you already know it's love. I, I appreciate that for sure, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so let's start back home, man. Let's tell me about growing up in Griffin. You know, was basketball your first love and who really introduced you to the game? My dad, my dad and my mom, but my dad primarily, he was uh, in Griffin, Georgia, where I'm from, um, from Atlanta too, but born and raised in Griffin, spent a lot of time in Atlanta, but in Griffin, Georgia, where, where I'm from, my dad, he was a local legend. Like um, he didn't go to, he didn't go to college. Uh, he didn't play professional ball, but he was like that. He was nice like that. And growing up, I used to watch him playing, and um, people used to always talk about him. And obviously, you know, the the the, the fruit don't don't fall too far from the tree. So he had me in that gym. I was watching him. I was in there grinding and working, and um, it just worked out for me, bro. I just I just got better, kept getting better, and then people was talking about that. You just like your dad, J JP. Like you just like your dad. He was cold. He was a hooper like you, and I took it and just locked in and and worked and grinded. Um, made my way to Atlanta, where the best basketball in Georgia is, and people started to realize who I am and know me. So I was playing travel ball in Atlanta. Uh, that's about 30 minutes south of, of Griffin, Georgia, and traveling every day playing AAU ball. You know that AAU circuit. You know how that go. That, that's, you know where it, that's where it goes down at. That's where it goes down at. So I got yeah. my name there and then just kept getting better. And, you know, my name became a, a really big name. Before I got to high school, I was already somebody and then got to high school, started getting recruited, and, you know, the rest is kind of history. So, yeah, so talk about that a little bit, your recruiting process. So probably what would you say about maybe 14, 13, 14 is really when you kind of started uh, making a splash. And then who, who were some of the schools, you know, going through high school that recruited you, and why did you ultimately end up choosing the Qs? Funny story, bro, and I told this to uh, in Mike Waters' uh, a podcast over day, but I'm glad that I got a chance to to do this with you. Nine and ten year old, nine and ten year old recreational league that I played in in Griffin, Georgia. I actually played on a team called the Orange Men, bro. Same colors, blue and orange. <laughs> now, obviously, when I was nine and ten, I didn't know it was the Syracuse Orange Men, but that obviously it, it, was, it was already in the books. That's it was already saying. in the book, bro. I got like pictures. Yeah. I got pictures that was in the local newspaper of me hooping Syracuse Orange. We actually won the championship, the recreational championship from nine and ten year old, ten year olds that year. So um, I remembered that move uh, when I was playing, moving forward, growing older. I got in high school. We didn't have middle school ball when I was in uh, in middle school, but I was good enough to where when I was in eighth grade, I was I was good enough, bro, to where I played on the ninth grade team. So I, I was in middle school in eighth grade, but I was playing on the ninth grade team in at, in our high school. I wasn't on varsity, but I was in ninth grade. We went undefeated that year. Like, we won 16 games. I was the leading scorer, best player in eighth grade, bro. So I'm like, okay, I see where this going. I'm locked in. I'm focused. I love basketball. It's my life. You, you already know. We hoopers. Basketball was our lives when we was little kids. No doubt. You know what I mean? So I'm doing my thing, and then I'm playing for the ninth grade team. And the varsity coach, he looking at me like, okay, he got a plan for me already. I don't know this, but they got a plan. They put me on ninth grade. I did my thing in ninth in uh, eighth grade on the ninth grade team. When I got in ninth grade, I was on varsity starting, doing my thing, averaging 16 points. We ended up going to the final four my, 
the freshman year, my freshman year um, on varsity, I'm the leading scorer on the team. So after that, I'm getting recruited by all the SEC schools, all the ACC schools, but I'm not playing AAU ball yet. I'm still not playing AAU. Um, after that ninth grade year, I start playing the AAU on the best team in Atlanta, uh, Team Georgia. I'm playing AAU ball. Now I'm traveling. I'm going to the uh, Charlie Weber. I'm at Nike All-American Camp. So I'm, I'm, I'm traveling, playing all over. So now all this attention outside of the SEC, ACC schools is coming. Uh, 10th grade year, I play in the Charlie Weber tournament against uh, D.C. Assault, Coach Weave, uh, Troy Weaver's team. Okay. Is that so we James, recruited you? James White. Was the, was the best player on 18. He's jumping from the free throw line already. E. We ain't even in college. Know. You know who he is. He's taking off from the free throw line. So I, I did my thing against Coach Weave's team, and um, he, he just remembered me from uh, from that game that we played against each other. They won, but I, like, I went off. Like, I, I killed them, but they won. Um, and I think he just remembered me and paid attention. So when he got to the Qs, you know, he remembered me, and obviously I was doing my thing all the way up until uh, 10th, 11th grade. And then, you know, we started getting, I started getting recruited. He actually brought Coach Beheim down to watch me play, I want to say, the summer of my 10th grade year, AAU. Um, Coach Beheim actually came down, like, during the summer, not even, like, at a, at a, during the summertime. You know, right. Coach Beheim can just travel for anybody. You know how <laughs> yeah. they go. And, and I'm from Georgia, so he came all the way down there to see me, so that's kind of how that played out. I actually ended up going up there. So fast forward, let's go to right before my senior year that, uh, that, uh, that fall. It was me, Billy Edelin, Julius Hodge. You remember Ooh. Julius Hodge? Ooh, special. We was on a we was on a recruiting trip together, and we was being hosted by Damone Brown and Allen Griffin. Shout out Damone and Allen. Uh, they took us to a, a a Syracuse football game. So this is the first time I've been in the dome. It's packed out, E. Like it's packed out. I've never. I'm from a little city, so I ain't never seen no. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Right. Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Virginia Tech versus Syracuse. Oh, you picked the perfect time. He like at the 20, bro. He like at our 20. He stepped back in the pocket, pump fake, hit the sideline and break 80. Like Mike Vick in his prime, in his heyday. I've never seen nothing like that in my life, E. And all the fans going crazy. And then they like, we play here. We play the carrier dome. I'm like, we play the dome? We play in front of this? Oh, I'm here. I committed the next day, E. So, so, the, so the dome sealed the deal. It sealed the deal. I, but even just that environment and people, oh, you you, 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 you might be coming to Syracuse. I, I learned about the culture and, you know, it, I was sold after that. Billy might have committed on that trip. Julius Hodge didn't commit. He ended up going to NC State. You know who he is. But that, yeah. that's just the type of talent that the coaches were recruiting at that time. Like, obviously. It's Jay Hodge, he, he's at, uh, I think he's at what, San Diego State, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep. Doing his thing, doing his thing. He had, a, he had a pretty solid professional career, really, really talented. But yeah, that's, but, but that lets you know Coach Hop, we, Coach Weave, and uh, Coach Bay, what, what they was on at that time, even before we got to the point where we won the chip, before the time even Melo and G Mac got there, what they was on. Dogs. We need dogs. Yeah, no, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. So you get to the Q's in 2001. Like you said, you're from Griffin, GA, but you're not used to coming to the snow. You come to the snow, it's your first year. I have you, so before then, did you even see snow like that? Total culture shock, my dude. Okay. <laughs> total, total culture shock. So they're telling me, like, it, I, I've never seen snow like this. So where I'm from in Georgia, and you you, you know Georgia, you, yeah. get, you get one or two inches, everything shut down, bro. Like school. Grocery store, you better get your groceries. But when they tell you that storm coming, you better get your groceries and you better be good because everything is <laughs> shut down. We don't know how to drive in that. We don't got no business being outside on the road in that. I know this coming to the queues, but I'm like, okay. They, they tell me it's snow. They tell me it's a lot of snow. Everything keep going. I'm like, okay, cool. I see snow. I ain't seen this type of snow, but I seen snow. <laughs> story, like, freshman year, bro, like, I'm in the bed. I'm asleep. I'm asleep. I wake up. 7.30 in the morning, I look out the window. I got class at 8.30, I look out the window. Bro, the snow up to here, bro. So I'm like, <laughs> where I'm from, where I'm from, everything canceled, up, you know, it's over. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm going back to sleep. Went back to sleep, woke up 10.30, 11. I look at my phone. I got like 30 missed calls. I see all my coaches calling me. I'm like, what's wrong? What's, something happened to somebody? Call them back. Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> they like, hey, why wasn't you in class this morning? Like, what's going on? I was like, coach, what you mean? It's the snow up to here. What, what you want me to do? <laughs> hey, you got to go to class in this. Like, this ain't no, this, that, that's mandatory. 
So it took me a minute to adjust to that. But after that first semester, I got myself together and adjusted to it. But total culture shock, bro. Total culture shock. It took me about a year to kind of to, to kind of get used to that. By the time we got to that sophomore year, though, I was ready. So tell me more about that first year, you know, that transition, you know, coming into college from high school and who really kind of helped you, you know, you know, through the ups and downs that first year. Bro, we had a squad. Like, so I, I, Preston Shumpert, I don't know if you remember. He Preston, shot my guy. Shout out Cole, to shooter, scorer, good leader. Uh, wow, that's Preston. crazy, bro. I, I I never, I didn't know that, man. That's bro, he was shot. so cold. Preston was so cold, bro. I, it's funny, like, he was 6'8", six, 6'9", six, shooter, get to the rim, step backs. Like, I ain't, I've never seen anybody like him at that point, like that tall. Where Dude, I'm that from, bad. everybody my height or lower, but to, to do what he was able to do. Deshaun Williams, um, okay. James Theus, Quef Dwayne. We had we had a squad, bro. I think we ended up going. We started that year off. We was like sixteen and zero or fifteen and zero, and then Coach Beheim like had to take care. He had a he had to have surgery or something. He had to take care of something, and he had to step away for like a couple weeks or three weeks or two weeks or something like that. And then we started losing some games when he stepped away. That kind of threw us off, and then it threw us off. We ended up going to the NIT, bro. Now. You didn't go to the NIT when you was at the QSO, I don't think. I did. I did. So, did you, look, so what, year, what year was that? So one year I went, I was out, we went. That was with Johnny and Dante. But the year with uh, D. Nick and, and T. Rob, they were seniors. We got, remember when we got, they took it from us. We were supposed to be was, in there. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's when right. coach was going off that, that year, too. So, yeah. That was that, your that, freshman, that, that was your sophomore? Fr- sophomore. Sophomore year. Sophomore year. Okay, okay. Now, obviously, you know, th- those ain't our standards. Let's just be real. <laughs> Those ain't our standards. The NIT right. is cool, but that's not our standards. So, right. um, we, we we fell apart a little bit that year for whatever reason it is what it is. But but like we were very talented that year. But that year also let me know a lot of things when it comes to college. Like, and I, I'll talk about Carmelo later. But I'll, let me tell you this story. So, freshman year when we come in, right? So Archibald Gymnasium. All the seniors they they brought us there. They like, look, we're gonna put the freshmen and the sophomores together. We're going to put the older people together. We're going to play. So, basically, what they're doing is letting us know, like, we know y'all This outside town. of practice. This outside of practice. This, this, this is even before we get to practice. This is, like, when we get to campus. <laughs> so, they, they letting us know, like, we know y'all talented, but this is how this going to work out. It's us. It's you. We're going to figure it out together. You're going to follow us. The coach is going to come in. But we gonna, but this is what it is. So I like that. You know, I did my thing. Hakeem did his thing. Craig did his thing. Billy did his thing. Um, but we, we, it was a pretty clear understanding. Like, okay, we, we gonna contribute and we gonna hoop. These dudes is good though. Like, these dudes can hoop. Period. So um, we gonna fo- we gonna follow their lead. We are gonna do our thing. But you know, it is what it is. And yeah. that, that's kind of um, how that went until we got to the coaching staff. We started doing our little individuals and developing some chemistry, and we started having a really good year. But when Coach Beheim had to step out for his surgery, um, that kind of threw us off a little bit. So, All right, JP, let's get a quick word from our sponsors. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm excited for the Super Bowl coming up Sunday. If you've never placed a sports bet before, Bet River Sportsbook has a super deal on the big game between Kansas City and Tampa Bay. Sign up with Bet Rivers today. Make a first deposit of at least $100 with the code BIGGAME500 and get up to $500 in free bets. All you have to do to unlock those free bets is make $100 worth of real money bets on the big game. There's never been a better time to get in on the action. Make your bets today at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. Go to BetRivers.com today and bet with a winner. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's step into that sophomore season. That's, I mean, that's that special year for – for Q's basketball 2000, 2003 national championship year. I mean, was it something early on that you knew like that was special with this team? Or was it like a, a moment in pickup before? You know how we get it in? We got the six week conditioning and then you play in pickup. Was, was there a moment where you like, okay, this, you know, we might got something special right here? The reason, the reason I just told you this, that story I just told you, I'm about to give you another story. So fast forward to the next year, same type of story. So Preston's gone. Coach, Coach uh, Deshaun is gone. James Fields is gone. Quet Dwayne is our leader. He's our senior. Yeah. Really good dude on and off the court. He takes care of his business in the classroom, off the floor. My, my guy got his shirt tucked in every practice. Like, I'm looking at him like, okay, <laughs> this, this is the way. It, this is my guy, though. Like, he's yeah, really yeah. smart Shout off the floor. 
Anytime me and Hakeem went to his apartment, he was taking care of his, we, we going over there to play video games with his roommates. He, in, he on the computer taking care of his business. I'm like, okay, so this is a good dude. He can hoop. He's our, he's our senior going into the next year. Yeah. So same type of story. We're like, okay, we got Carmelo. We got Matt Gorman. We got G-Mac coming in. Now Carmelo come with all these accolades and all American and he ain't even supposed to be here. He's supposed to be in the league right now. So yeah. we like, okay. G Mac was a total surprise, bro. My other brother, my other brother, just like you. We'll talk about him later. Um, he yeah. was a total surprise, but let's talk about uh let's talk about Melo. So same story. We like, okay, we'll put the we'll put the younger group. We had a lot of freshmen that, that year, obviously. We were sophomores, but Q was our Quef Dwayne Q was our only senior. So it's like, okay, he's our senior. We're the upperclassmen now, even though I'm a sophomore, but, I mean, we got a lot of freshmen. Same story. We're going to put G-Mac, Melo, Matt Gorman, that crew on one team. We're going to be on one team. Let's see what this dude – let's see what this guy got. Like, you ain't going to just come – we know what they're saying about you. I saw you on TV, bro, doing your thing. That's how, we see you, but you ain't going to just come in here and just take over. So, we so you guard him, though, right? Absolutely. Kind of gave him the same know. skill. I already know. E. <laughs> After that session, this is before we got with the coach. This is right when we get on campus. <laughs> After that session, bro, it was very clear. Like, this dude here, he's bigger than you. He's got better basketball IQ than you. He's faster than you. He shoots better. He just I, – I had never seen nothing like him at that – up until that point in my life playing ball, and I played at the highest level. I've been all over the country. I'm getting recruited by all these schools. I'm at Syracuse. I done went through a year at Syracuse. Yeah. Got better. I ain't never seen nothing like that. He never seen nothing like Melo. Like I don't even think he was in shape then. Like he was out of shape. And I, I remember watching your podcast with Hack with, with my boy Hakeem, and he said the same thing. Yeah. He was out of shape, but bro, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Even with QR Senior, um, we came out of that like, bro, this dude is the he the truth. We 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 gonna have to like follow him. And then G Mac was a total surprise. Like like he was doing this thing in high school and we was like okay cool but we gotta see it G Mac come in there with his sweat you know G Mac you was the, you came I got a story about you too that I that I want to tell when you came and played with us. I don't even know you remember the story. I do I do I remember man I, okay. I, come on man yeah okay 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 but um but G Mac with his swag coming in knocking down threes getting to the rim making plays talking trash like mellow talking trash I'm like bro we we got a chance bro if this is before we even got with the coaches E like we knew like we got a chance, bro. We got an actual chance to win this thing. So that's so before the season, you already knew something was special. We knew, bro. We knew. Like I'm not even playing. Like you, you, and you understand, Coach Bay. You know how he coach and how he move and all that and all that. But we like, I'm telling you, after that, we was looking at each other like, hey, and we we cold. We 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 at the cues. Like we we here for a reason. Right. So I'm hooping. Hack Hoopman, G Mac. I mean, I'm sorry, not G Mac, but um, Clef Dwayne, Jeremy McNeil, Craig. Like, yep. we had a nice little recruiting class coming in. So Billy Edelin, but we like, damn, G Mac, Mello. This this is a whole nother. We got a chance, bro. We got a chance. This is even before we got to, with the coaches and was doing individuals and building chemistry, bro. So let, let let's talk about that whole tourney run because. I mean, you you played a key role in that whole tournament. You shot over 64% from the field for a guard. That's unreal. 12 versus Texas, 14 versus Auburn. Uh, and versus Kansas, you had 8-8. Eight and eight. But, like, a lot of the stuff you did, it didn't show up on the box score because you, you did everything. Like, you did all the intangibles. Like, you're the type of guy that winning teams would need to have. What, what do you think about your role in particular, that tournament, and how was it? How did you excel in that role? Like, what what made you so comfortable in, in, in that role? So funny story, E, like when I went, and I'll go back to freshman year. Let's go back to freshman year real quick before I tell that story. Me, Hakeem, Craig. Craig, Craig got a lot of burn um, because we had we had a solid center and centers, but Craig was talented. He was big. He, he was smart. He had really good IQ. That freshman year, me and Hakeem played and Billy played, but we didn't get the burn that we thought we were supposed to be getting. Right. Coach Ahan was out. He'll he'll go to his comp after the after games. He look at the little stat sheet and be like, "I got to figure out a way to get Josh and, and Hakeem in the game." I mean, Hakeem was like, "Well, but just put us in the game." Then you keep saying this, put us in the game. But we were very talented that year. Yeah. So like, um, we were very hungry coming into that sophomore year. Hakeem got the opportunity to take a step up when when it came to his game. He became a starter. 
super talented, and I'll talk about how I came to later in the podcast. Super talented. Craig Craig's was a starter his freshman year, so he was playing. He was solid. And then uh, when he came to me, I had to figure my role out. So, uh, But I'm getting better every year. Uh, that freshman year, getting better, and then coming into sophomore year, I'm doing my thing. E, anytime I get minutes, I'm balling. Like, I'm balling. Anytime coach give me – if it's 5, 10, 15, 20, I'm doing my thing. And he's looking at the stat sheet after every game. Like, I got to figure out the way to get Josh in the game. I'm like, coach, put me in the game then. Like, why you keep saying that? Like, put me in the game. <laughs> but now that I'm a coach, I understand when you got a lot of talent, you got to figure it out. You got to make it work. So, yeah. for whatever reason, when we got to that tournament, coach let me go. Like, he just – he let me rock. He, like, Josh, go. Like, didn't say nothing else. Like, just play. He let me play, let me do my thing. I mean, in the type of game that I had, I was already at the point to where I wasn't a selfish player at that point, but I'm going to do what I need to do to be in the game. I'm going to contribute. I'm going to make the right play. I know the talent that I, that I got around me. I got GMAC. You know GMAC. You played with GMAC for three years, right? One year, one year. My first one year. Yeah, one year. All good. Um, I got Hakeem. I got Melo. I got Quef. Like I got Billy Edelin. I got to figure out my role. I got to figure out my. I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. So I kind of figured out my role during that season. And then when I got to the tournament, coach really just let me go, bro. He just let me play. He let. I got. A, I got way more minutes than I got in the regular season. I played. I was solid in the regular season, but I got way more minutes. And I did my thing, and I made the right play. And um. It was a beautiful – it was beautiful, bro. I, I, I wasn't expecting to get those type of minutes, honestly. I, I've never said that. But um, once I played – we played Manhattan the first game. I had a pretty good, solid game. Contributed to that win. Melo and G-Mac did their thing. Hakeem, Billy Elan, Quef Dwayne did their thing. And then that Oklahoma State game, G-Mac didn't have his normal start. Melo didn't have his normal start. Because Bayhan did his – Billy, Josh, go. And me, and me and Billy was always like, whenever he – Tell us to just go, go play. Melo not playing good. G Mac not playing good. Hack not on his normal. Me and Billy was like, let's get it. Hey, let's get it. Like we was yeah, always, yeah, we was yeah. we was always ready to come off the bench and do our thing. And you know that's kind of how that tournament played out. But you you hit it on the head though. Like you make the right decision. Like that's what type of player you, you you took care of the ball. You played hard as hell. You could you could bring it up. You could find people and then you could score. Like I tell everybody, you got the best floater game I ever seen. Like. My God. From the time that we was, you know, when I played, when I came up to Syracuse and we played, and then when we played against each other overseas in New Zealand, that floater game was like, come on, man, you're shooting 64% from the field as a guard. Like, that's hard, man. Like, you Absolutely. Gotta, you got to be able to get in there, be crafty. You got all this. You know what I'm saying? Like, getting them up. Uh, especially yeah. on this on the high, on this highest level, you, I definitely had to, um, I definitely had to figure it out. But when I was younger, bro, I used to work on that shot. Like I was always, like I told you, I was always playing up in eighth grade. I was on the ninth grade team. And even in my neighborhood where I'm from, Amberwood, the neighborhood that I'm from, I was, I was young, but I was always playing up and I'm playing against these older kids. And right before my game developed, they blocking my shots and, and, and like smacking my stuff. I'm like, I got to figure out a way to get this shot off. Yeah. So bro, I was out there in my yard working on that shot. At a young age, even before I got in high school, like working on it to get a shot to get over over height, and I didn't even know it was gonna be that popular, bro. But I low like like e like low key. I was I actually was thinking like I gotta figure out a way to get this get something off to where ain't nobody blocking it. And these big dudes that I'm playing against every day, like they're not gonna block my shot. So I, I was out there working on it in the yard. I got confident with it. Then when it got to like playing AAU ball or you know, being around uh, playing at the gym at, in middle school, I was shooting it and it was dropping. And then when I got in eighth grade, playing on the ninth grade team, it was dropping. And then when I got in high school, it could nobody do nothing with it. Could nobody yeah. do nothing with it. You, you got a, a great guards know how to be creative and in, in, in finishing around the rim, whether it's wide, over top, body contact. Just and like you, bro. Funny. Let me go in and have, let me talk about the story when you showed up. I don't even know if it, I don't think it, it might have been. I don't know if it was the summer or if it was like in the fall, but nah, you, it was look, JP. It was okay. I was at Oak Hill and I had a little break, and that was okay. my visit. You know what I'm saying? So okay, and, okay. And it was so it was kind of like it might have been like fall because y'all had just started. Okay, okay. And, but bro, you came in and we, we it was open gym. You, you had all the accolades too, and I was like, okay, let me let's check this dude out, bro. You came. <laughs> this is this is what I don't even remember what year that was, but we were we we had a squad, bro. And you came in that thing and held your own. You was hooping, finishing with the left, the right, pull up, step back. 
I was like, damn, this dude coming next year with G Mac. Y'all gonna be? It had to be like my senior year. That had to be my senior. Yeah, year. It, it was oh four oh five. That was my senior. That was my senior year. year. Okay. I was like, damn, this dude about to be with you, G Mac, D Nick, Demetrius Nichols, yeah, Terrence Roberts, T Rob, Mookie, Daryl Watkins. I was like, bro, y'all about to be cold, cold, cold. Cause you, bro, you held your own. You was killing us. So I was like, you was ahead of your time, bro. You, 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 you but it is, everybody know who you are, but let me make sure you get your flowers. Though you, he came in our senior year and was, and was holding his own and getting buckets against us too. So we, we knew you was going to be one of the ones, bro. Absolutely. No, I, I, I remember that. I remember that vividly. That was, that was you like. You was hooping, that. bro. You was hooping, bro. You was hooping. So you guys win the national championship game. Talk to me about the locker room. What did coach say? You know, I know he gets in his, his you know, everybody gets together and then he says his stuff on the whiteboard. And what what was said from Coach Beheim after that? Bro, he was, this the quietest that I ever seen Coach Beheim after that game. Like, he was just looking at the stat sheet, walking back and forth. You know Coach Bay, he, he never quiet. Like, I think he was just, that moment was obviously championship, but he, he had missed it one time in 1987. He should have won it that year. Keith Smart hit a shot in the corner. Been to the yeah. final four. Um, I never seen him like that quiet, just walking back and forth. He was on. He was in a whole another, whole another world, bro. I, I never seen him like that, and I was, I was very happy for him to see him in that moment. Um, he definitely deserved it. Legendary coach, you know. He's the reason that Syracuse is what it is still there. He's the reason that, um, you know, we got the fan base that we have, and you know, coach, coach sat down at the Qs, played at the Qs, put his work in. Locked in, focused, stayed loyal, you know, and he got his flowers for it. Now, it ain't easy to win a championship. Like even those teams you was on, when I left, I was like, we got a, we got a chance. Like y'all, y'all got a chance too. But for whatever reason, you know, it's not easy to win that chip. Like I, even, I saw something that you said the other day, and I be saying it too when I be seeing how people are always talking trash. Like lately, if we not as good as we normally is, you was like. We spoiled, bro. Y'all, y'all fans are spoiled. Y'all are spoiled, and and that's just how good Coach Bayam has been over the years. Like those fans, we are we are spoiled now. Obviously, you're gonna expect greatness from a program like us, Syracuse. But we are spoiled. But it was good to see him, you know, get get what he deserved to get after all the work that he's done. And he was speechless. He's just walking back and forth, nothing to say. And you know, Coach Beheim is never the one to not have words. So it, it was right, really yeah. dope, to see him. <laughs> dope to see him. And I was happy to be able to have contributed to that. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, right. Especially especially after the game, he's going to have something to say. You know Man, he had nothing to say, E. He had nothing. He was just pacing back and forth looking at the stat sheet, bro. So talk, let's talk. We talked about Melo a little bit. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Melo because I know in practice, you were the guy really going guarding him. And, and, and he I was took the challenge so, every day. Right. I'm so I know you had your battles. You know, talk to me a little bit more of that. What was it like just going back and forth with him that one year, you know, every day in practice? The, the, the cool thing about Melo, um, everybody know, like, how good he is when it comes to basketball and on the court. But what people don't know, and I got the opportunity, the opportunity to experience it those six, seven months or whatever it was, He's just as dope off the court, bro. Like he's he's a Melo is a better person off the court than he is on the court. And that's like that sound crazy to say how talented he was. Um, but again, Melo used to come into practice every day, like locked in, doing doing his workout before practice with Coach Weave and Coach Hop. Shout out to Coach Hop and Coach Weave too, but shout out to Coach Hop. And I know Coach Hop is your <laughs> guy too. I know on, Coach Hop is your guy too. Coach Hop brought that energy for you. Man, absolutely. But um, just watching him work, he he had a professional work ethic already. And then um, he was already talented. And I definitely took the challenge every day to play against him. And he was cooking me every day, bro. He cooked me every day. I did my thing, too. I did, But I'm not going to act like, bro, that's Carmelo Anthony, bro. He he cooked me every day. He cooked everybody every day. But but, but was, there, was there a moment where, like, you went at him, maybe got two, three buckets and, and let him know, like, Hey, look, I ain't just going to, you know what I mean? I beat Melo. I, he probably, he don't even remember this, and I, I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but I beat Melo one-on-one one, one time before. And I, I was slick with it after practice one time. Like, I don't know if it was the five or three. But he beat me He beat me every time. He beat Hakeem every time. I don't think G-Mac ever tried to play him one-on-one, but we, we used to try to play him one-on-one. I caught him one time. I, I, I got my three. I beat him. 
let's play again. Let's play again. Eat. I walked off the court. I said, nope, <laughs> I'm done. So I got my dub off of it. Um, because he, he he was busting our ass every day in practice. Like, he was on another level, dog. But he made us better. Um, it was beautiful to, like, to see that type of talent every day, knowing that you're not going to see this again because everybody knew that he wasn't going to come back. Uh, even though at the end of that season when we won the chip, he was like – he made it seem like he could possibly come back. I had a conversation with him at the end of the year. I was walking in the Manly Fieldhouse, and he called me. This is after he got drafted and everything. He called me, and he asked me how everything was going at the Qs and how we was doing. I was like, we good, bro. Like, everything's going good. He was like, JP, I wish I could still be there. And that was dope to hear him say that. Like, Melo really loved the Qs, bro. Like, um, he really loved the Qs. And he wanted to be there. And he want, I think he did want to do another year with us, but obviously he couldn't. Like, you – he top man. He gotta do what he gotta do, but <laughs> just just to like hear him say like, "Bro, I wish I could be there." You know, I, I miss it and all of that. It, it's just a testament to um, the job Coach Beham and his staff did, Coach Hop, Coach Weave. The, the testament, the job that they did, and just the type of program we got. And I think, like you said, people get spoiled with all the wins. They don't see like the background and everything you got to do. They don't see the bad times or the hard times that you go through too you know, in the background that you got to go through being a being a, a student athlete and having to figure out your class schedule and take care of the schoolwork and do practice. Right. They don't understand that part. And I think Melo liked that part. And he was a he was a real part of our culture. And even I saw you post something about D.C. being a GOAT. And I know I, I want to talk about this because. OK, talk about it. <laughs> D.C. is Derek Coleman. Dave Bing is definitely the GOAT. I got the opportunity to see Melo firsthand. He don't got the years. But just what he done and committed to to Syracuse and winning the chip and you know the Mellow Center and now if Mellow would have been there two three four years if Mellow would have been been there with you and G Mac just imagine that bro and D Nick and Terrence just 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 think about that bro you know what I mean Man, so first of all he'd have been a senior so it would have been no way with me but I, if he'd have even stayed another year that would have been like you know yeah he I mean it was he, he did what he had to do that's that's a yeah. point blank period. So he's a, he's a he's a he's definitely a Syracuse. He's definitely in the top one, two, three for me. Absolutely, bro. But it was you know, definitely dope. Not, you're not me. gonna get an argument from me, bro. Okay, 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 okay. Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let let's talk about your uh, Q's career as a whole. I mean, for me, you know, one of the ultimate glue guys did everything. Ultimate teammate. One of the greatest teammates. I've seen it. You know, I I played against you overseas, but I've seen it. Like you just. You what what a coach wants to have because you do everything you don't complain, low maintenance guy. But I think you really sacrificed a lot at Q's. You know what I'm saying? Because you can score. Because like I said, I played against you in New Zealand. I seen you go. You you know you you leading the league over there and scoring. You know what I'm saying? But your role at Q's because you play with guys like Melo, like G Mac. Uh, you know you talk P Shump, guys like that. But you sacrificed, bro. You know what I'm saying, but but were you were you satisfied with that role? Obviously, we won a championship at 03, but you could you could score that thing. You could have did more. Yeah, I could have. I, I was getting recruited by all the SEC, ACC schools. He, all of them, everybody. I'm from Georgia, um, and just kind of go back to what we kind of talked about before. Um, I didn't want I didn't want to stay in Georgia. I didn't want to go to an SEC, ACC school. All my boys that I played travel ball with, they all went to Kentucky. They went to the Kentuckys and Memphis and. Uh, Georgia, Georgia Tech, NC State, Texas. I was being recruited by all those schools. And I, I just wanted to do something different, man. And like I told you, I played for that Orange Man team when I was in nine to 10-year-olds in, in my recreation in, recreation in the city that I'm from. I used to see the Big East on TV down there in Georgia and see Jay Hart and see uh, Ryan Blackwell. Shout out to Black. See Alan Griffin. Shout out to Griff. Shout out um, Black and Griff. Man, shout out to all. Eton. I used to see them on TV, bro, in, in Georgia. And, like, I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to kind of get out there on my own. And um, Syracuse was always a big deal for me. You know, it was always a big deal. And to get that opportunity to play in the Big East and to, to be recruited by Coach Bayham and to get that type of attention from that school, they hadn't won a chip yet, but they were Syracuse, playing against the Georgetowns and the Connect Yukons and Pittsburgh. And, you know, you played in the Big East, so you know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. that, that is a authentic – 
epic, legendary conference, you know, and, and I'm a basketball connoisseur. Like my basketball IQ was really good, I think, and it is really good, which is one of the reasons why I'm coaching. I wanted to be a part of something special. I wasn't expecting to win a chip. I didn't know that was going to go up, play out like that. But just to like be a part of this Syracuse and just look at how like our fans support us and Syracuse, you know, the culture, like it's a beautiful thing, bro. And and man, I, I, I don't know where else they do it at like that. JP. Man, I mean, you got to say maybe Duke, Michigan State. I don't know. I, yeah, maybe. And even that, even then, it's like we better than them when it comes to that. So, like, For real. that type of love, bro, like, I don't regret what I did. I know it was the right decision. Now, with that being said, me and Hakeem, freshman year, we had conversations like, hey, bro, what we doing? Like, we ain't playing. Like, let's get, the, <laughs> let's get up out of here, bro. Like. Like, my game is different than yours. Like, the, the, the type of game you got, you're going to get your minutes. You're going to rock out as soon as you touch down on campus. I had to put – that's how talented you are. You know what I mean? And um, G-Mac, I feel like he's in the same category as you. Your talent is on different – is on a whole other level. It is what it is. I ain't even afraid to say that. You know what I mean? I, I have no problem saying that. I had to kind of wait my, wait my turn when it came to, like, me getting what I was supposed to get. I came for one year, had to wait his turn. Bro, we, we had a lot of conversations about getting up out of there and transferring. I had um that sophomore year we won the chip. I had SEC, I'm not gonna say no names. I, I have never even said this before, but I had SEC, ACC schools calling my mom, being like, hey, he too good to be sitting on that bench. Like <laughs> he, he too good. And, and then my boy Hakeem, like, he getting the same type of love too. So, you know, sophomore year, even after we won the chip, bro, I'm in Coach Hop office. Me, Melo. Hakeem, for sure. I think G-Mac might have been in there, too. But we in Coach, office, Coach Hop office. We just kind of having our little exit conversation. And I'm like, Coach, I'm out. Like, I'm, you know, we wanted – me being a little selfish, it is what it is. But, like, the, the next two years later, I realized that that was definitely the wrong decision. But, I'm like, I don't know, Coach Hop. Like, I ain't playing as much as I want to play. I know I'm contributing and I'm doing my thing. We just want to chip, E. You know how it is when you're a competitor in Hooper, though. Come like, on, man. Come on, man. You're trying to be out there on that floor. Like, I, no. I'm trying to be out there. You know what I mean? And before I before I move forward, Coach let me rock out all those games. Manhattan, Oklahoma State, Auburn. The final four game against Oklahoma, I didn't play that many, as many minutes as I wanted to play. We won, we won handily, too, but for whatever reason, Coach Behan didn't play me. Bro, I was sick, like, to the point where I'm on the bus after the game. Nobody saw it. But I was on the bus crying because I feel like I didn't contribute to that Oklahoma game. You know what Depending. I mean? I got, a, I got a couple minutes in. That we blew them out, but everybody did their thing. But I just – the way the tournament was going, I was rocking out in every game. I was sick, bro. I right. was sick. And my mom was like, you ain't got no reason to be crying. Like, you good. You've been contributing. Just stay locked in. Texas game, I did my thing. Kansas, I did my thing. Um I was I was almost I almost transferred, bro. And Coach Hop was like, "Hey, you do not need to transfer." And Melo was like, "Hey, bro, you do not need to transfer. This is after the chip. You you need to stay here." And just just having Coach Hop and, and having Melo specifically, I think G Mac was there too. I'm not sure, so I don't even want to put him in it if he wasn't. But definitely Hakeem, Melo, Coach Hop. It was like, "Nah, you need to stay, bro. You need to stay." Like. You got the opportunity to to be a leader. You know, they they was telling me all that, like being a leader and stuff. And then funny story, E, junior and senior senior year, regardless of what Hakeem and G Mac was doing, they was the leaders of the team too. But I was definitely a leader of those next two years and a yeah. captain. Yeah. And when it came to getting the D Nicks and Demetrius Nichols and the Terrence Roberts, Daryl Watkins, everybody else that came after that, I was the leader of the team, regardless of what G Mac and G Mac was the leader too. Hakeem was the leader too. Don't get me wrong. But I was definitely a captain and a leader. And even my senior year, I won the Big East, the Big East Sportsmanship Award, uh, which is a big deal to me because that yeah. means that people respect what you do. I'm not even the best player on the team. G-Mac, Hakeem, but I won, the, you know, I won that award. So, But you, you, you commanded respect, how you carried yourself on the court, how hard you played. You know, how, right. you, like I said, low maintenance, you're not complaining about nothing. Like, you, you should be playing more, you could be playing more, but you taking those minutes and you, and you do what you had to do. Like, that's what, Absolutely. like, people see that, bro. And that's why you're a head coach right now, because people see that, like, you probably should have been a head coach before you are well, right now, you know, but but right. it's just, right. they see they see what you're doing. They see the work you put in, and that's, 
Like you command respect and, and people can- Bro, I wasn't, I wasn't even looking at it like that back then, bro. But like, as I got older and then I started playing professional ball, you know how that go. Um, like, then I realized like, what I did at the Q's is a big deal. But the funny thing about that, E, like, people will be giving me the love, like I'm a legend and I'm like, Man, you won that national championship. You had a part in a big part. <laughs> right. Let me, don't, don't right. Let me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, a big part. You hear me? No, it is. It is. You know, but but when I look at like you, I look at you, I put you in the category of G Mac. I put you in the category of Hakeem. I put you in the cat I put you in that category just because, bro, you how talented the stuff that you did and how talented you I saw you before you got to the queue. So I was like, Damn, this dude here is for real. And then even to play against you in the professional rankings in the professional leagues to where we getting paper and making money to see you on that level too. I, I didn't necessarily see myself in that level, but like, as I got older and like what you just said and coaching and you know, what I did contribute, I do understand why people look at me, how they look at me. Absolutely, bro. No doubt. No doubt. So tell, tell me about coach, coach B a little bit. What was it like playing for him? And I asked everybody who come on JP, you need to give me one of them stories. One of the locker room stories, one of the. them. I got you. Stories. <laughs> I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. I got a bunch <laughs> of them. Um, funny thing about Coach Behan, Coach, when it comes to me, Coach Behan didn't never really he didn't curse me out. He got me one time, and I, and 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 was this this was this had to be freshman year because this is why Quef Dwayne is so important to me. Coach Behan used to give Quef Dwayne the business, but the cool th like cursing him out and you know Coach Behan it was it, certain players. Coach Behan, I think he feels like okay. I got to like really get into them and get the best out of them. And, and absolutely. That's what it was. Like I watched it. I seen it firsthand for four years. You seen it firsthand in your time there. And Quef, Quef, Quef Dwayne was one of those guys to where coach Bayon felt like I had to get into him. And I watched how just how Quef handled it every time. Like, like a man, like, okay, let's go. Still, still be a leader to our team and still like handle his business on the court, not take it personal. Like I watched that firsthand. Coach Bay, it had to be my freshman year, bro. He got at me one time, like cursed me out, like, and I took it, I took it on the chin, bro. I took it on the chin, still practice, <laughs> but but a little, but like a little bit later in that practice, when it kind of we might have had a break or something, I was on the side. I broke down, bro, crying. Quef, Quef saw me. This my, this is my dude. Like, this is our, this is our, this is why we want. This is one of the reasons outside of Melo, G Mac, Hakeem, and that team that we won the chip because we had this type of leadership. Quef pulled me to the side, like took me back. We we at the dome. Took me into the back in the locker room, the little hallway in the locker room. Was like, hey, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't you ever, don't you ever let nobody see you like that. Don't you ever let nobody see you like that, crying and you don't do that. Don't let, don't ever let nobody see you like that. And and freshman year, bro, I'm talking about. And I sucked it up, went back out there. But after that, I was cool, bro. Cause Bayham never cursed me out no more. Cause Bayham never. After that, he never had to curse me out. He didn't curse me out anyway. He let, he let me rock out, bro. He let me do my thing. He let me play. I was one of those players to where he felt like he didn't have to do that. Like, I, I didn't really get cursed out by Coach Bay because I played, like you said, I played hard. I did the intangibles. When I was on the floor, I contributed. And even one time, I think this was this was uh, junior year. This is the first time Coach Bayham ever said anything like this to me. We was playing Maryland. And I was, I, I was, I had a solid game, but this is this in a tournament too. I don't know if it was the sec, second or third round, second round, junior year. Coach Behan came up to me and said, I need you. He was like, I need you. It was like fourth quarter. He ain't never talked to me like, like I need you. He walked up and said, I need you, son. And, and for him to say that to me, that let me know that I had that kind of trust factor with him. Like, he let me rock out. He let me do my thing. He trusts me. And um, he only cursed me out one time, bro. But after that, I knew he trusted me and he rocked with me and he was going to let me play my game. And he trusted me to, like, move, move our Syracuse culture forward. And when it comes to the younger guys, tell them the right thing to do when it comes to, like, getting on the floor or contributing or even off the court, taking care of your business, not getting in trouble, and dealing with them as well. What do you think that does for a player, man? Like, when, when, when a coach goes up to you and says something like that? Because it's funny because I, talked, I talked about it with John Wallace last podcast. Like, he, 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 he said, man, coach, put that battery in my back. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you have a coach come up to you and give you that type of confidence, like, hey, I need you. Like for me, like you ain't gotta tell me, coach. But when you do, yeah, 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 what, yeah you definitely have to tell you. It, it does a lot, bro. It, it does a lot, and um, it, it it does more for like the team than it does for me individually. Because regardless, I'm gonna play how I'm supposed to play. But for me to know, like, 
coach coach really rocks with me and he gonna let me play and even if I make a mistake he trusts me enough to like not not get on to me and put the ball in I got I got G-Mac on the floor senior year junior year I got G-Mac and Hakeem on the floor it's a lot of them games bro to where I made the final shot or the finish to like end the game against a Providence or a Villanova or I had the ball in my hand and I, I hit the last shot that put us up four or you know whatever it was so yeah. and he trusted me with that so um it just let me know that I can continue to to grow as a player but when it comes to the team just be myself be a leader say what I want to say and get on to them and when deep when uh Terrence when Terrence saying something to the referees I can grab him and be like hey bro stop, stop bro Stop, bro. Don't do that. Or when Hakeem messing around and not playing defense, like, hey, bro, block that. Go get that rebound. Or, or, or when G-Mac might not be, like, hitting shots, bro, you good. Like, keep shooting, bro. I got you. I'm going to set this screen. I'm going to get you the ball. You know what I mean? He he, tr he did trust me when it came to that after that, that championship year. And, um, you know, it matters. It matters moving the culture forward, and it matters when it comes to that class that you had coming in with your group, those four years that you had. Them, my four years and then those four years after that, your, your four years, I'll say this, bro. Them eight years, that might have been the most talented or at least one of the most talented classes, eight years, four, eight years, whatever you want to call it, that we've had, bro. Y'all were so talented. A lot of McDonald's All-Americans. Y'all were so talented. We won a chip. We had Melo, G-Mac, Hakeem, me, Craig, Jeremy McNeil, Quiff. In the four years you had, that was a them eight years, bro. That was that was one of our prime years, regardless of what years we've had over the over the over the you know the time that we've had at Syracuse. Absolutely, I know you agree with me when I say that. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. The thing is, like, you, you keep talking about like making the right decision, and like you are rare. Your your type of player, you were rare because you added value on the court without scoring the ball. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, like you didn't like. It's kind of like I, I, when I look at Syracuse play right now, I kind of look at Kadari Richmond. Uh, I don't he, know if you've been paying attention, but he, he cold. He, he cold. cold. He cold. He but cold. he add, he can he adds value without scoring the ball. Like JP, like especially nowadays, I look at the game like players think so much like I have to score, I have to score. Like nah, like you setting up people to score, you running the floor, playing hard, like that energy that you putting out there is trickling down to your teammates so so it has an effect on the overall team like that's rare to have players like that JP. Like, everybody everybody like can't be everybody can't be jerry mcnamara everybody can't be hakeem ward everybody can't be Derek coleman dave bean uh i put preston shumpert in that category everybody can't be um everybody can't be those players bro you you don't you, everybody can't be everybody ain't like that and, and on that level when it comes to putting the ball in the basket or you know, getting a play call for you every time. You got to find your role. And, and for every, for anybody that ends up seeing this, the, the younger generation, you got to – everybody, you got to find your role, man. You got to figure it out. And I got a chance to figure out my role. I knew, like, what I needed to contribute. I knew that the respect – I could have taken more – I could have took more, taken more shots than I took, bro. I could have probably scored more points than I did. And Coach Behan would have let me rock out. I just I just realized what was important to, to uh, my teammates and to me and to winning. And for me to be on the floor and for Coach Beheim to trust in me and for us to, like I said, move the culture forward my four years when I was there. Um, I, ju I just knew that. And even watching the, the class before me, you know, the Allen Griffins and the Damone Browns, Eton, I don't want to miss nobody. Uh, Deshaun Williams, how talented those classes were before me. Jason Hart, shout out Jay Hart. Let me make sure I shout out my guy. Jay Hart, Jay, we had Jay Hart on the podcast. Shout out Jay Hart, one of the realists. He one of the reasons why I went to the Qs when I was when I was in Georgia watching Big East and seeing how cold he was on both ends of the floor being a leader. Mm. Got that dog in him, like, you know, I, I was I was paying attention to that. And um, you know, when it came to my four years being there, I wasn't necessarily gonna be any one of those specific players. Um, but I knew like I had to make sure that when it comes to my role, it had to fit the culture and the team and the coaching staff. And, you know, I I, I really I made the right decision not to transfer. Hakeem made the right decision not to transfer, obviously, even though we didn't win a chip after Melo left. We had two solid years. Junior, senior year, we won the Big East Championship. My senior year, we got beat by Vermont that first year, that first uh, game in the tournament. But, you know, we, we, we did our thing there, and we definitely contributed to the culture, just like you did and the people that was there with you as well. Absolutely. So talking about that, what we're, what we're just talking about, like defining your roles on the team, is that something that you take into – 
to coaching with you right now. Like you, you want to let these, like, this is your role and this is what I need you to excel at. Is that something that you think is important for a coach to be able to get across to their player to the players? Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. And, um, like, I, again, like, when, going back to playing in professional basketball, like when you're making money, making good money, being in leagues like you were in in Australia, you played in Australia, one of the top leagues in the world. Ooh, and loved it. You, people don't know how good that league we'll is, bro. We're going to talk about that because we love okay, it. Okay, 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 okay. But um, just, just being able to play on that level and um, playing at a Syracuse and, and making good money playing professionally and then people telling you, Hey, you, you, you can be a coach. Like everybody listens to you when you speak and, you know, they follow you when you lead. And, you know, I, I had to figure it out. E, I didn't know I was going to be a coach. You know, you know, playing professional basketball, or playing basketball in general, you don't never want that ball to stop bouncing, especially if you're good enough like you, like how you are, how you, be, how you still killing, you know, killing in the TBT and doing your thing. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? You, you don't I never want it. that ball. I love the hoop, man. I love the hoop, man. Absolutely. You, you're a student of the game and, and I am too. I, I even retired probably earlier than I wanted to eat because I still could have made money, still could have played in those type of professional leagues where we're getting that real good money. Um, I just was hearing everybody saying, like, you, you, you're you, going to be a coach one day. I got the opportunity. I didn't know it was going to be women's. It could have been men or women's for me. I think I could have related either way. Moving forward, you know, I think I could relate either way. Um, but my opportunity came. I was I got the opportunity to be a Division One coach first year. Recruiting coordinator, player development. Threw me in the fire. Um, shout out to Ryan Weisenberg, who hired me my first two years there. My second two years, let me make sure I shout out to Alicia Milton Jones, um, WNBA legend, my head coach, my second two years, my, my last two years at Pepperdine, WNBA legend, champion, Olympian gold medalist. Let me make sure I shout her out. Uh, just being oh, around Dominion. her. Yeah, on Dominion, right? Yeah, she, yeah, was, at and she, was, she was at the Q's. She was well, at the Q's. I was there. She was cool, man. Cool people. Yep, she, she, she left Pepperdine and went to the Q's. But them two years before she went to the Q's, bro, we changed that. She did. She changed that program around. I helped a little bit. I put my little two cents in. But being up under her and just learning the game and uh, her culture, how she coached, um, and her changing that pro program and me being a part of it, coming here to where I got a program now, you know, I know what we need to do. And even like I told you earlier, like, we, I bring a professional uh, work ethic to coaching. Like, we're going to do our individuals in the morning. We're yes. going to do our weight in the earth. You know how it is playing professional. You do individuals, you do weights, and you practice in the evening or later in the afternoon. And we're taking that kind of mentality. And, you know, my, my team is getting better. I love what I'm doing. And um, I'm blessed to be in this in this position. But, yeah, I'll be honest with you. Like, I, did, I, did, I never knew I was going to be a head coach. Um but definitely, like, Syracuse preparing me, playing professionally and, you know, being around a lot of people who know basketball, it, it definitely prepared me. But Syracuse absolutely prepared me to be where I am now. I wouldn't be where I am if we wouldn't have won that chip. And I wouldn't have went through those years at all, bro. I wouldn't be here at all. So what 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 would you say the difference is? Because I want to talk about it since we're on it already. Uh, you know, you being the head coach at Western New Mexico women's team, what's the difference between the women's and men's? And was that, like – a preference for you or, or like you talked about it was just kind of an opportunity that's how it came about it was a, it was an opportunity it wasn't necessarily a preference like I know basketball and even I mean like you like you say if you look at my game at, at Syracuse I know my role bro I know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at I know my type of the team that I got um so I know how to like figure out where when I need to score when I need to play make or when I when Hakeem and G Mac not having their games and when okay like I ain't gonna score that much today because G Mac is killing I gotta make sure I set these screens or when I'm penetrating make sure I kick it to him and and him knock it down or Hakeem locked in today this is my roommate this is my guy like I'm just gonna we just gonna feed him play out of him hit G Mac I might not score I'm gonna get my ten rebounds and my eight nine assists though um, and, it, and when I got to professional ranks you know and I had my opportunities to be in, in the NBA too I worked out for a lot of teams. Uh, coming out of college and even like after I played professionally two, three years, I got workouts after that too. It wasn't supposed to work out for me. So I did good overseas, but just going through all those different situations, bro, and trying to have to figure it out. And, and you know, you know, cause you're a professional when you in when you're an American going to a team overseas, you gotta be the man period. period. You know? So I, 
period. So I had those moments, too, where I had to be the man, like you said, led the New Zealand League and scoring a few times, played in Australia in that prolific league, really good league, top league outside of Euro League. Australia's next. If you look at all the Australians in the league right yeah. now or even in the past, so you played in that league and you killed in that league, you did your thing, so really high level. I just learned what I needed to learn being in these different cultures and um, to be a coach. And I didn't have a pre preference when it came to women or men. My opportunity just came first with uh with women um that's kind of how it played out i think i would i think i would be a, a good coach either way i'm from i played at syracuse four years when it comes to men's basketball they're gonna respect that period yeah. no period question. you, you no know question. that and then women's basketball i mean it's just about men are more athletic no disrespect to women but more athletic so it's some stuff you don't have to teach necessarily you know but when it comes to women you got to teach all the fundamentals and uh all the x's and o's and you know I'm talking about from help side to 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 finishing with your left hand, you know everything. You got to it's detailed, bro. And I think it's helped me as a coach and moving forward, regardless of what happens. I'm I'm where I want to be, but regardless of what happens, I think um it's gonna help me coaching women absolutely. But I had no preference, bro. It just played out how it played out. But like you said, I mean, when you played, you made the right decisions. You put yourself in a position where you could maybe score or put somebody else in a position to where they have the opportunity to score. Defensively, you were talking, you were communicating. So now you just, you know, putting these young ladies in those same position to where you was playing. Now, hey, this is your That's role. It. I need you to be a leader. Hey, I need you to be a shooter. Scrappy on defense. So like Absolutely. you, but but JP, tell me if I'm wrong. You can know the game, but you have to be able to, you know, translate it to them in a way to where they can understand it. You feel Absolutely. what I'm saying? Because because they not sit, like you. It's easy for you. I want to. I, I I do this, but now for them, break it down for them to where they can understand. That's what people don't understand. Like that's the that's the real hard part. We we geniuses of this, or or you know, I want to say I don't know. If a genius no, you are. You right. You right. You right. We know right. the game. So, but you know, we got to be able to translate it to how they can understand it and get it. That's tough. Man, it it is hard, bro. It it's, it takes it takes a lot of patience. Yeah. Um. It takes a lot of uh, hours in the office, in the gym. Even before we did this podcast, we practiced earlier, bro. I'm in here looking at practice earlier today. I'm looking at the individuals we did in the morning. Every player is different, bro. It's it's a grind. And that's why, like, just like what you said the other day with Coach Beheim, like, we Syracuse fans is spoiled, bro. We're not going to – it ain't going to look – it's not going to look like it, like, championship team or those teams that we had or dc Derek coleman's team billy owens team shout out to Derek coleman and billy owens they um even when um even when we were at the cues they would come to little golf tournaments and let me and hakeem follow them around and give us advice and just talk to yeah. us about basketball big but family it's not, big time family the cues bro the cues bro but it's not gonna look like it's not gonna look like that every single year and even the other day like i'm, I'm just looking at what people saying like Two weeks later, we we reeling off wins and doing our thing. Like you know, things are going good, so it's not gonna always play out like like Syracuse. Oh yeah, twenty five wins every year. Sometimes we're gonna have to go through some struggles. Sometimes y'all gotta understand. You gotta remember like this work that Coach Beheim put in and this and the Syracuse, you know what we've put in to be who we are. Like you gotta remember that when we have times to where we might not necessarily be winning undefeated and beating all the Dukes every year and. You know, beating the teams we're supposed to beat when we have some adversity, they they got to remember that. Um, but it's it's a tough job, bro. But like you said, I mean, we hoopers, we hoopers. You've coached before. You've been in the setting at the Syracuse and Detroit, so you know what it is. You're doing your thing in the community, and you coaching on the side. You taking you taking care of the kids with when it comes to basketball and other stuff. It's a grind, bro, and you just got to stay locked in and focused. And at the end of the day. As like you know, these players get older and wherever whether they end up being professionals or in the workforce, you just got to know down the road you'll get your flowers. You know, I'm not asking for that. I'm not asking to get flowers, but that's just how it play out. Like, there's no way I would be coaching if I wouldn't have went to Syracuse and being around Coach Bayheim and Coach Hop and Troy Weaver, who's the general manager at Detroit now. Man, shout out to Troy Weaver. Like he done his thing. Yeah, uh, Troy, Troy, hey, yo, yeah. quick story, JP. I decommitted from Michigan State. I say this, I, I told the story plenty of time. Called my man, called Q, was like, man, we need, we, we trying to see what's up. Coach, Coach Beheim, Troy Weaver, Coach Weave fly, fly down to Detroit that next week. We had practice at Detroit Denby. Man, offered me right after practice. Shout out to Troy, Troy Weave, because he was there. Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, he know, he, he know one when he see one. 
And you're a big part of the culture, obviously. Like, just like me, you're a big part of the culture. So, man, everything play out how it's supposed to play out, man. Like, um, it, it, it's so cool to be a part of Syracuse and, and, and this family. Like, it's, it's a legit family. It ain't no nobody hating on each other, you know. We can right. we can have our, we can have our conversations and be like, this team is better than this team because there's a lot of great teams that that's come around even before me and you was there. We had the championship team. I feel like your group should have won a chip. It is what it is. Y'all so man, y'all was talented. But just 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 to be able to be a part of that, bro. Like I'm proud of it, and I'm I'm glad I didn't transfer, even though I had my moments to where being I was being selfish. But those also, those moments also helped me, like my junior senior year, to be the leader that I was, and you know, to contribute what I contributed to that program. Absolutely, bro. Hey JP, man, you great player, better person, dog. I'm gonna keep it hundred, like like one, like a real legitimate, authentic, hundred percent genuine guy. Like you know what I'm saying? Like at it, and that's rare too. Absolutely, you know, you, you absolutely. Get that where you where, where like you want to be around somebody? That's you, bro. Real rap. And the cool thing, the cool thing that I want to say about me and you, even outside of Syracuse. Outside of that family that we have, we got the opportunity to be around each other overseas and to play against each other and to spend time with each other and to actually have a relationship and do stuff off the court outside of Syracuse. Bro, I'm glad I got that opportunity. I'm glad we got them experiences. You my brother forever. You know that. Uh, whatever you need, you, I got you moving forward. Whatever happens down the road, you know, if you ever want to get into coaching and I'm good and I'm and you – whatever, bro, I yeah, got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Come on, man. Yeah, just I, say the word. Come on, man. Absolutely, and um, man, I'm glad that I got the opportunity to play against you overseas, and and us to have that, that time together, bro. And um, you you know what you've contributed to this culture. You get your flowers too, but I got to make sure I give you your flowers from one that was there before you. Uh, you, you a legend, bro. And um, I I just appreciate this opportunity. Shout out to this podcast. Shout out to you doing your thing in the community, bro. I'm very proud of you. Keep going, my, my dude. Like you know you know how we go out here. Like people gonna say what they say and regardless of what happened or what didn't happen, but what you're doing, it matters, bro. And keep doing what you're doing. You're contributing to the culture. You're contributing to the world. People paying attention to what you're doing, kids, everything, bro. So keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you for figuring out what you want to do after playing ball because you and me, we one of the ones, regardless of what leagues, um, to be able to play in the professionals and make money and do that grind and travel the world. Like, everybody don't get that opportunity, bro. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to figure out what you want to do when that ball stops bouncing. So to see what you're doing, because I understand now that I'm coaching and I got people that I'm around that's looking at me and I got to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because they watching me, you know, yeah. my players, and they on and off the floor, bro. It ain't just about basketball. You know what I mean? So to see what you're doing and what you've contributed, keep going, bro. Keep growing. Coming, coming from somebody that, that loves you and respects you and been around you. You know, even before you got to the Qs, when you came and did your thing in the, you know, play, you know, did your thing with us, we had our fun off the court then too, and overseas we did our thing. You know, just to see where you are, bro. Keep going, bro. Keep going. Keep going. The sky's the limit, my dude. Oh, that's love, big time, bro. I appreciate yes, that. Keep let's, going, let's, my dude. Let, let's talk about that overseas a little bit, because you, 2005, 2015, 10 years overseas, CBA, ABA, Estonia, Australia, New Zealand. What was your favorite place to play? I think I have an idea, but like, talk about a few, uh, you know, those spots you played in and, and your favorite place to that was to go. Probably New Zealand. I spent the most time in New Zealand. I got a nice network there. I got my friends, real, real friends, brothers there. Um, I started, I started my career there, not making that much money at all to the point to where I'm making really good money in that league. Spent a lot of time there. My goal was play, played in the Euro. Not in the Euro League, but I played against Euro League teams in Austra in uh, in Europe and uh, in the Estonian League, which was a solid competitive league. Played in Finland, um, but my goal was always to get to Australia. I had a couple opportunities to get there before I did, but I decided to maybe play somewhere else and turn down this opportunity or this contract to play with the New Zealand Breakers before they started winning chips. I turned down a, 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 a turned down a, the year before I turned down a contract because where I was, I was happy and I was solid. Um, and then they just went on this run to where they was winning championships. You played in Australia, so you know the New Zealand Breakers and that run that they had. And you was in Townsville. I, I ended up going to Townsville later on, later okay, on. Okay. You know what I mean? And you played in that league, too, which is a very solid league, very professional league. But um, my goal was to get in Australia, which you got there. You was there a few years before me doing your thing, killing. People know who you are. You did your thing. But I ended up eventually getting there and playing there. Um, did my thing in, in, in 
uh, leagues over here, the minor leagues, when I had time to be at home before I went to play overseas. Um, but, yeah, bro, I, I had a pretty solid professional career, and I'm happy with what I did. But, you know, what I'm doing now, what I did at the Cuse, that's that's on that level, and, and I'm very happy with those accomplish, accomplishments as well. Man, how dope is New Zealand and Australia off the court, though? Just Just like, for me, like, I've been a lot of places. Man, look. Probably my favorite place ever, bro. New Zealand. It got to be New Zealand. Like yeah. Australia right there, because I lived in Melbourne for that seven, eight months at Melbourne off the chat. Melbourne's dope. Melbourne's dope. Melbourne's dope. But New Zealand, just the whole, like, because it's like a, it's crazy because it's like a, it's almost like a soul vibe, too. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's like a, I, I used to, I used to tell my family, bro, when I, um, when I was playing in New Zealand and just like, so you, and you know this better than me. So after the initial flight into Auckland, when you come in from the States, you know, you know, that flight, you know, you jump on security in, in L.A., go through the security check, you go through the little, uh, you know, you do what you got to do in terms of going to another country. Like, you know, you got to do that. But then once you get in the country and you're traveling from uh, city to city in the country, they don't even have metal detectors. You just get on the plane, bro. You just get on the plane. You don't go through the metal detector. These people don't lock their doors. It's safe. They don't have, like, <laughs> they don't have snakes. They don't have poisonous animals. Yeah. It's like, it's a whole different vibe. The love is different. And I told my people, like, when I was playing in New Zealand, if anything happens in the States, it's funny to say this now with everything that just happened these past four years. But if yeah. anything happens in the States and I got to get up out of the United States, I'm going to New Zealand, bro, because I got ASAP. I, I ASAP because I got, like, brothers there. I got people there that took care of me and, 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 I would go to I would go to dinner with or go to lunch and families and stuff. If anything happened in America, the way we got to get up out of here, I'm going to New Zealand. And I know you understand me when I say that. You know what I mean? So Australia is a favorite place, but absolutely, I spent the most time in New Zealand. I started my professional career there to where you know I'm just I'm just playing there to like figure out my career and you know I might not even be making that much money to where I'm like grinding up and now it's like okay I'm definitely going back to New Zealand. Things going good. I got to get in this Australian league to where I get an offer in Australian league and I turn it down, but I still love New Zealand enough to go back and play. And then now it's like, okay, I have another really good year in New Zealand. I get this offer in Australia. Now I'm in Australia playing where I wanted to play. My goal was professionally, you know what I mean? So man, New Zealand is love. Um, I keep up with my people there. I'm recruiting players from there. E like, you know, it that's always gonna be family there and you you was able to spend time there too. So you know, we spent our time there. We was we was around each other, around our New Zealand family, you know, our brothers who played in the league and so you know what it is. I mean, that that was an excellent experience, bro. And I'll never forget that. And I'm glad I got the opportunity to experience that with you, somebody that I even knew before I went over there that came from Syracuse too, bro. That that was a hell of an experience. For real. Yeah, that's that's the dopest thing, like being on a, a whole other part of the world, you know what I'm saying? We was at Q's, now we in New Zealand. Like, and, and shout out New Zealand because they they keep evolving the game too. Like, they pushing it forward. My man, Lindsey Tate, you remember Lindsey? He over there, he over there coaching, pushing the game forward. So, shout out shout New out. Zealand. Shout out New Zealand. Shout out, shout out Lindsey Tate. It's funny you say that. I, I sent him a message about on, on Instagram about maybe a month, a little bit over a month ago, just telling him, like, how I appreciated playing against him and that challenge. Lindsey was Lindsey was cold, bro. Lindsey was cold. <laughs> Shout out Lindsey. Hey, Did you you, you played with Lindsey? You played with Lindsey. That's my guy. We won a championship together. Wellington. Oh. Wellington was a dope city, JP. I, I never got the opportunity to play to play at Wellington. I was always trying to beat them, bro. I was always trying to beat Wellington. But remember, we kicked it. We kicked it at the hotel for a second. I, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I remember. But yeah. you and him together, bro. That's crazy. That. that that's crazy, but um, shout out Lindsey Tate, shout out Mika Vacona, shout out Nina. Hey, Mika, my that's my guy. Hey, that's my brother. That's my brother for real. Hey, he's so man, my man, just one of the best dudes, dog. Absolutely, that's absolutely. That's, but that, that's, that's New Zealand, bro. We we got that's a chance. To, we got a chance to experience that, and I, and I know, bro, that had to matter. What you doing now, and how you are, bro, and how you've grown. And, and where I am and what I've done, bro, I know New Zealand played a, a vital role in that, bro. 100%. 100%. The people there is just, it, it, such, it's it's just such, such nice people. It's all love. You know what I mean? Love, there, what they be saying? No worries, mate. No worries. No worries. Right? Mate. No, mer no worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. What 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 does Q's mean to you, the university and the community? Because, you know, I know 
you weren't just in that bubble, you were out in the community. You know, what does right. they mean to you and what makes Q so special? I'm, I'm, I need, I got to do a better job of like, what you want, I got to do a better job of like, but but again, like I was playing professional for 10 years. I'm just yeah. now at the point to where I, I've been able to sit down and be settled. Um, but what you want, I, I want to get to the level to where you at with it too. But I mean, the Q's community, it, it, it's vital to me. It's important to me, just like you. Like when I was at the Q's, I was on the south side going over there and, and hanging out and, you know, kicking it with the, with the, with the guys out there and yeah. you know, having fun and doing my thing too. You know, it, let me be clear. I wasn't no saint at the Q's. I had my fun and, you know, I might have been doing stuff I wasn't supposed to do at times, you know, but, you know, when it came to taking care of the schoolwork and, you know, taking care of my business, I did that. But, you know, from – from the south side to like to Syracuse, I'm, I was in the community all over, all the way, just like you was, bro. Shout out my guy Nut. Shout out, Shout my out to Nut. Nut. Shout out to my guy Nut. <laughs> <laughs> he took care of me when I was at the Q's too. Met, you know, drove me around and, and let me hey, know the city God. and showed me the city. My took God, care to this day, to this day, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely, bro. I, I was one of those too, even before you got there. So I, I went through that process and I experienced that too. You know, playing in the summertime, just going out there and playing basketball in the summer leagues and stuff, having fun. You know, just, you know, it was a beautiful experience, bro. And I, I didn't know it was going to be like that. Um, that snow threw me off. Once I got acclimated, <laughs> once I got acclimated to that, I was good, bro. But, man, the Cuse is love. And I'm just so proud to be a part of the culture. And, you know, just to even begin spoke. That was a long time. I graduated in 05, bro. It goes so quick, too, don't it, E? Like, you there oh, and then. Fast, fast it, bro. Bad. You're hooping, and then you know you go do your other thing, and, and it's good to see you in the community there. But it goes quick, so you know even for those ones on the team now and hooping, like you gotta enjoy that experience, and you gotta like you can't rush it. You gotta enjoy it. Make sure you give all you're supposed to give to it. Be in that gym, you know. And for the ones that's going to be at the Q's, like you know, put your work in and take your time and enjoy that process because it goes by quick, and you're gonna miss them four years when you're gone and. You know, Coach Bayham and you know that experience and doing your thing, playing in that dome. You're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss it. Like you gonna miss it. You go over. You go over to Ukraine where I went. You play with <laughs> 47 people. <laughs> you gonna miss it. Like you said though, JP. You, I mean, you gotta be in the present. You gotta be in the moment. Like give everything you got in this moment. Like yeah. you blessed to be able to play sports at, at, at a college level and, and then be able to get yeah. access to an education. You know what I mean? So, like, just give all you got, and then the rest is gonna take care of itself going forward, man. You're gonna put yourself in a better position when you do that. So you, so you was rocking with Michigan State, and then you, you, you chose the Cuse at the end. Hey, JP, I, you know, I was so, so I was doing my thing in high school, like McDonald's. All Absolutely. American. Back Absolutely. then, you, you know, if you the man in Michigan, you went to Michigan and Michigan State. I went to the game. I went to the game, the Breslin Center, 0-3. Championship year when y'all played, you, you know, you remember when y'all played Chris Hill at about 10 threes? Yeah, yeah, he but was killing. Won, oh God, he was killing. But y'all won, though. We, we did, we did. But y'all won. Did. I remember Hack putting one on Adam Bellinger's head so cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so after that game, I was at the game. After the guy told you, I told my coach, I'm like, man, listen, I was committed at, at the time to Michigan State. I was like, man. You was committed. You ain't committed. I was committed already. So at my sophomore year, I committed. I, You know, so I was like, man. I, I gotta see what's up with Q's. I just see how y'all was playing up and down. Hey, that's me. Like I, I got it and went and and I made a play, made a decision. So I'm like, we gotta see what's up, man. D we snuck you. We snuck you away. Hey, look, oh. D committed. D committed. Told my coach, see what's up with Q's, man. My AU coach, she called. Like I said, they came down that next week. Saw me practice. Offered me right there. Boom, I'm coming to the Q's, man. That's crazy. I, I heard. I think I heard that story, but I ain't never heard you tell it. That's crazy. Just yeah, like bro. that, yeah. But that, but it was y'all, man. I, you, uh, like you said, be hack mellow G Mac. Like I seen how y'all was playing. Coach that was a cold coach. game too. That was a cold, cold game. It was too. like this, cause cause you seen, you know, it was his own. But Chris Hill was just hit. You know, they did. They did the crazy. one three one. They split the wing. So you know, when they go in the high post, they just turn around, throw it back to my man up top, and he was hitting that thing deep though. JP, I know. I remember. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I he remember. Was in that thing deep, so it was just one of them games. But if he so, bro, we would have lost that game. <laughs> we would have lost that game. You would have stayed. At, you would have stayed at Michigan State, bro. Nah, it ain't had nothing to do with that. It ain't had nothing to do with that. Okay, right, okay, right okay. from the jump, I'm like, man, okay, this. 
man, come on, man. This this fit okay. my style. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. That's that dope. So you played that part. You played that part. You ain't even know. I was I I I, I, had some, I had some moments out there in that game, bro. I definitely did. I had some moments in that game. I definitely did. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. What what's your favorite place to eat in the queues? Sean, now, a lot of these places Sean, might be gone from the yeah, you're I know. About. The, the Shine Center. I, I stayed in the Shine, bro. Okay. I stayed <laughs> in the Shine, the shine. <laughs> Goldsteins. Go, Goldsteins, the, the wings and wedges. <laughs> you don't remember the wings and wedges. Hey, hey, JP, I just know you used to, we used to get the, you know, you used to call late night, they deliver it to you. Yeah, I'm them, telling you. They deliver it. Hey, we go, hey, I got the here, here go the card number. I knew, the, I knew. Oh, the car, bro, the car was official. The car worked everywhere, bro. The Did car you, worked you, everywhere. Come on, man. Late night, they bringing you 30 wins. The car worked everywhere. The car worked everywhere, bro. I miss that car, man. Study hall, study table, the steaks and the lobster and the – they took care Big of Burn had you right. Big Burn had you right at study man, table. Shout out, shout out to Burn. Burn. You know what? Shout out to Burn. That's my guy, regardless. That's my guy. He's still checking in on me, make sure I'm good. Shout no out doubt. to Burn. Shout out to Burn. It is what it is. Yeah, shout out to Burn. No doubt. He, he's a good dude. Absolutely. Last question. Last question, man. What's your take on this year's Syracuse team? And, you know, what are some pros and cons, you think? Now, now that I'm a coach, bro, now that I'm a, a head coach. Yeah, break this it down. COVID, this COVID pandemic, bro, it's hard to, it's hard to coach and to, like, practice and you know you gotta you might have a player that got some symptoms and you're gonna have to yeah the whole team gotta sit out a week and you you know you want coach Bayham uh the Edwards kid can't come to the states and you know he he it got it's tough to coach right the coach right now bro so to be able to even be where they are now to where they still solid like we got an opportunity we just got we gotta play we gotta win some games but you know we're solid we're winning games we're competing you know Look at Duke. Duke never been where they where they Duke never looked like how they look right now. Michigan State, Michigan State, second and last in the conference. So I'm, no excuses. I'm I'm not the excuse type person at all when it comes to anything. But no excuses. It is what it is. You still got to compete and play and deal with whatever comes to you, injuries or you know somebody missing when it comes to COVID. But it ain't easy to coach right now, bro. You're gonna you're gonna have some losses that you probably necessarily wouldn't have had. You know, if the the times weren't what they are right now, so I think Coach Bayon doing a really good job with everything that's going on. People don't understand taking two or three COVID tests every weekend. You know, if somebody uh, get a positive, now everybody got to kind of you got to miss a couple of days in practice. Or people don't understand really understand that's on the outside what's going on when it comes to you know college basketball right now. It's not a normal situation, so no excuses, but. You know, I think we're in a good place. We just got to win some games and 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 to get in the tournament. I think we're in a good place. We got to win some games, but you know, we we won the other day against NC State. Looked like we was going to lose that game. They pulled it off. A little momentum. So we'll we'll see what happens. I like the team. It's a good dynamic. You know, we we've, we've had different types of teams. Coach Bayham's done a good job of, you know, bringing in talent and adjusting to whatever talent he has compared to whatever talent he had before. People don't understand that dynamic either. Like, you don't have the same team every year. You know, somebody might uh, transfer or graduate or go to the league, you know, you wasn't expecting them to. So I'm a coach now, so I, I understand, like, everything that he has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, the paperwork that comes with it, you know. Um, I think he's doing a good job. We're going to be okay, just like we are every year, you know. So these fans and people that's, like, uh, got something to say, they just need to be patient and keep rocking with us and let everything play out. Like, you never know what's going to happen. And you know that. You know what I mean? So, we're going to be all right. B biggest thing is, for me, I think there. I, I always say it because I do the free games and stuff. Like, this year, is, is you're going to have your rust, your time issues. Like, because you said, you're getting those, those lapses and those times off. But you got to be consistent with your energy and effort, bro. Like, that's what Absolutely. I said, like, going forward. Absolutely. Like, you're going to make up for a lot of those mistakes when you're playing hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um... Like I, th I think they're in a good place, man. You, you're gonna lose some games that that, that wasn't ex that you not don't expect to lose. Mm -hmm. But again, people don't understand what what you got to deal with as a coach and as student athletes uh, when it comes to this COVID. You're not going to class normally. You don't have the normal like day to day to where you in class and with a professor. You got your classes online, and 
you, you got to take these tests, and it's a lot going on that people don't get to see that's on the outside, bro. So your whole routine. Your whole a routine. lot of these losses that's happening might not necessarily happen on a normal day-to-day -day basis if COVID wasn't here or moving forward once we get the pandemic under control. So no excuses. No excuses. You know, it's other programs going through it too, but we're in a good place, I think, overall. We got, we got some talent. You get to see these players that, you know, that could be getting more minutes. Coach Behan know what he's doing. I mean, you you you've been with Coach Behan for four years. He know what he's doing. Like, he one of the best coaches when it comes to development. And you know, this this player ain't ready yet to get these minutes that all you fans think he's supposed to get. You know, I, he got to go through his process. You know, I know you had your moments with Coach Behan to where you like, what's up, Coach? Yeah. But, <laughs> but then like later on, you look at it like I understand what he was doing. Hundred percent. Doing. You know what I mean? So, yes, sir. That's it. That's a fact, 100%. JP, my dog. Man, hey, like I said, bro, one of the best dudes I know. I don't care about hooping, man. I, I'm talking about just a person, you know what I mean? Like, I, I appreciate you, bro, coming on. You already know it's all love, man. Good luck the rest of the way. Because you got your win, the, your first win, of your, you know, not too long ago. So shout out to you. And it's plenty more where that came from. I appreciate you, bro. We got a tough stretch coming up here, like, to where we playing teams that's, that's number two in the country, in Division Two, number two, number 10, number 11. So we really get to see what we on. I, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some tough games, but at the end of the day, I know we're going to compete. We young, but they're getting better, and I'm looking forward to us to us uh, getting better moving forward. But like I said, my guy, man, I appreciate you. You my brother forever. Whatever you need down the road moving forward, I got you. You know what it is, and we got a chance even outside of – I got a chance to be with you at Syracuse before you got there and spent time with you. I spent time with you when you was there and I came back. I spent time with you overseas, so we actually got a relationship outside of the Cuse, and you my guy. And, again, bro, keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you. This is dope to be on this. This is one of the top podcasts for Syracuse, a basketball, and then even comparing it to other podcasts. I'm paying attention, bro. You got legends on here. I don't consider I don't consider myself a legend, but I appreciate you for having me on here. No, you a legend, man. Had right. on here. Legend, you my guy. Right. I appreciate the opportunity, bro, and I'll be paying attention to you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving our culture forward and keep doing your thing. You you going in the right direction, bro. I'm with you, and I'm, I'm I want to get with you as you keep moving forward. I'm gonna get with you, but whatever you end up doing, bro, I want I want in, bro. Let me make sure I say this on the camera. Whatever he got going moving forward, when he this this dude moving forward like he, <laughs> I want in, bro. I want in. Come on, bro. I'm with you. You already know. Like, hit hey, my line. You know what time it is. Yes, sir. My God. I'm ready, bro. Appreciate your love.